Welcome to another Monday Night Live Chats. Uh, I am your host, Aaron Matthew Kaiser. And I do want to say up front that uh, we do seem to be having a little bit of technical issues. So hopefully we are able to get through this episode without too many issues. Um, uh, as always, feel free to leave some feedback. If it's not going well, we'll try and adjust if something's not working right. Otherwise, this is live television and we we do what we can all right so um i am happy to bring on my guest tonight uh he is a very good dear longtime friend of mine i've uh, been in the chat room of his live streams multiple times and um we know each other back from the uh when we both lived in san diego um in fact uh both when we were kind of in college if i remember correctly um, uh, he is a YouTube commentator, uh, and, uh, well, we'll, we'll get into that in a, another moment. Uh, I'd like to welcome, uh, mundane Matt himself, Matt Jarbo. Hello. <laughs> so <laughs> I finally trapped you into my, I mean, I finally gotten you onto my live stream. Don't don't talk to me like you talk to all your dates, Aaron. Okay, like let's 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 stop. There's enough there's enough accusations going around Hollywood right now. The last thing you need is, is another one. Okay, I stress another one because you've been down this road before. I have not. That's hilarious though. <laughs> we 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 know someone who has. Uh, that was not we do. me. <laughs> we do. I mean, it's not a laughing thing at all. It's horrible, but it's oh, also like it's also yeah. it's also memories at this point, you know, like memories yeah. from when that bad thing happened long ago. <laughs> so I I met sidebar just because we're on the topic. I ran into someone at a networking event a week ago, and it was like someone we were Facebook friends, but we never met in person. And it's like, oh, great. Yes, this is great. And then, like, I, we, we talked, and, and she's leaving. I'm like, you know, if you want to, like, get together for a Hollywood lunch sometime, let me know. And then I kind of paused, realized that kind of came out a little weird. And I said, not not in a Harvey Weinstein way. And Ooh. Ooh. It, it, which it, it was one of those things where I'm just digging it deeper and deeper. But luckily, she thought I was making a joke. That's and, good. And she goes, you should have said not in a Harvey. It, you should have been like, but more in a Kevin Spacey way. Well, where I'll is, scoop this, you up and I'll carry you to the bed. It, this was before that. Um, this was days after the James Tobik thing. So she's like, "Is it too soon to make a, a, a Harvey joke?" And I'm like, "No, but it is too soon to make a James Tobik joke or something like that." And yeah, that. Uh, 
I think I've just guaranteed this stream is going to be demonetized. Uh, you know what, man? As a person who deals with a demonetization bot literally on a daily basis, unless we start dropping serious, serious swear words and bringing up a couple keywords uh, that you can't say, and those aren't the seven words that the FCC won't allow. It's it's places on the map and certain groups and organizations that operate within those certain places on the map and uh, the naughty bits they, they that they've been up to. Are they the same words that you shouldn't say when sending someone money on Venmo? Uh, there, there's certain words that happen if you, you know, if you say the word is twice very fast. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually heard a story about someone whose Venmo, I, I will try and say this without saying the, the phrase, but their Venmo payment to a friend for like rent got a hold on it because he jokingly said that he was getting certain types of, of weapons from a, a certain oh, country. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, they literally were like, no, anytime that these certain keywords are said, we have to flag it. Make sure you're not actually sponsoring this type of activity. Which is just insane because it's like, yeah. you know, these algorithms, these these bots, they never they never understand context. And right. that is their their biggest uh, biggest problem, in my opinion, is, is the lack of context because yeah. that's what bites so many of us in the butt so many times uh, is like, you know, when you're talking about – because I do current event news coverage. Mm -hmm. So like, OK, for example, today I talked about um, NBC News basically released a propaganda video trying to claim that uh, Gamergate was a key in the rise of the alt-right. And and you got to understand as a person who <laughs> a person who was in Gamergate from the beginning and those of you out there that don't quite understand it, that's OK. You might have heard some things on the news. Um, uh, it's not what the news tells you. Trust me. And they you know, there's a lot of like, you know, a lot of ties to greater things like there's literally a book right now. There's a book right now from a, a female game journalist or game developer. Sorry who I mentioned, not by name, but I mentioned three times in the book and as being kind of like the start of Gamergate, if you will, like the, one of the core at, core things that happened. And she essentially says that Gamergate is the reason why Trump got elected, i.e., if you boil it down, she's trying to say, I'm the reason Trump got elected. And I'm like a left-leaning West Coaster, you know what I mean? So it's one of those things where I'm just like, really? You would think you that know, if that were true, Trump would at least thank you by, like, paying off your mortgage. I'd be cool. He's got the money, I think. Well, not so much anymore. They've devalued his worth. According to according to a report, he's like, he's no longer valued at a, at a billion. He's valued at, like, $672 million or something. Only $672 million. Yeah, you know, only. I know. <laughs> right? Just only valued at that yeah. amount of money. That's like... At that point, that's like Michael Douglas money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, let's, um, let's like, kind of roll back a little bit and um, just kind of talk about how you got started on YouTube. I, I know you touched, you know, on it a little bit there with, like, the entire Gamergate thing, but what's... Let, let, let's just preface this entire conversation with what's your YouTube story? Ah, yes. YouTube. Where do I begin? Such a long time ago, my story. Uh, no, actually. Far, uh, far away. Yeah, as evidenced by the fact that I have a Millennium Falcon rug <laughs> tacked to my wall. Oh, that's, that's a, a rug? legit rug. That's a rug I wow. bought at Comic Con for 50 bucks nice. and they shipped it to me. And I have a cat that's got like likes to poop on things that she's not supposed to at the moment. And I'm just like, you know what? You know what? That's going on the wall. It's going on the wall, and I'm fine with it because it's awesome. Um, it, it and so I did not realize it was a rug, but it looks very It's a nice. rug. <laughs> it's, it's a rug. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a worthy investment to my, to my decor of my office. Um, but essentially, so no. So what happened was – you tear that rug right up. Yes, Aaron. 
I just hear that right. Jesus, dude. Like that's something. Okay, we're not gonna go there. Just you. You want to talk about being demonetized? You start making sex jokes while I'm tell, telling my YouTube story. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> For uh, those of you that see, don't know, I take time. great pleasure known... in going into his chat room and getting him to say the most awkward things. Dude, people pay me fifty dollars to say the fourteen words. So, and that's the so you got nothing. You got nothing. However, the people who paid me paid me fifty dollars to karaoke sing Barbie Girl. That was pretty funny. Um, that was a fun night until the Vegas shooting happened. Right. I'm like, yeah, this, this is a good stream. And then all of a sudden it's like, you hear gunshots in Vegas? Oh, everyone's like, stop, head over, let's let's cover this. Yeah. But back to the story. So Yes, back to back to your YouTube uh, um, story. I moved okay, I moved to Los Angeles uh, from San Diego um in in spring two thousand ten. And I wanted to be a writer. Uh, and as anyone in LA will tell you, you don't make any money writing in Los Angeles. <laughs> Um, unless like you get a, unless you get a studio deal and even that's like hard. So without any other discernible talent and no gear, uh, as Aaron will attest here, you have to have gear in order to get jobs as a grip or something on set. So I was, uh, I was in a bit of a bad place. Uh, I was, uh, unemployed. I was on food stamps and I was on unemployment and my rent was going up and everything was, you know, it was just expensive. So I thought, well, what I can do is I can talk and I can be antagonistic. I'm really good at being antagonistic. So I'm like, maybe I can take those two ideas and I can merge them together to do YouTube. Now, at the time, I had a friend of mine um, who was paying his rent off of YouTube um, and he only had like 12,000 subscribers. He's paying his rent in Studio City, which in 2012 – surprisingly was still relatively inexpensive like 900 for a studio yeah right you're like wow really where do i find that i'm just uh, trying to you know think of being able to pay like rent on just twelve thousand subscribers yeah well no because i mean it was just the views he had a video go super viral though Ah, and it last yeah he did a he did a parody of like mario and Justin Bieber, and it went viral, got like 4 million views. And so he was able, like, that was in also in the early days of monetization. So it was a much smaller pool, and the ads paid out a lot more. Nowadays, it's totally different. Uh, nowadays, if you're not out there hustling every single day, it's going to be very difficult. But once you get to a point, it can kind of start operating on its own. Um, because I do current event coverage, it requires me to always be on the ball, to always know what's going on. Um, and so, yeah, so basically I, I was jealous of him at the time and I was mad and I was angry at the world in general. And I thought this would be a good way for me to kind of do this. Maybe, I, maybe I could become that shock jock, you know, like the Howard Stern. Knowing you, I'm sort not of... surprised. Well, I mean like, yeah, but that's not, a, but the thing is though, it's not sustainable. Uh, it's not sustainable without an edge or with, without a gimmick of some sorts. So I did it for a while, and uh, I actually ended up getting some videos that did pretty well right off the bat, mostly because the Coney 2012 thing had just happened. And the Coney 2012, at the time, their first video hit 100 million views in 24 hours. It was the fastest-growing viral video. of. Uh, I think it still is up there, even at this point. Yeah. But it was and the first video. Point, had... You weren't showing your face on your channel. No, this was this was in early 2012. So I was using an iPhone 3GS to record my my videos. I was just recording audio into iMovie. What you um, weren't recording with a red Epic Dragon buttercup? Yeah. Something? You, you, no, I. <laughs> Every time I see a YouTuber with a red now, I'm like, shut up, just stop. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, cause there are people there that, you know, they can, they can afford that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was using my iPhone 3GS and I was recording audio in my car and then uploading, you know, I, I would just upload right from iMovie. I would just, you know, drop in an image, a uh, static image, and that would be the video. Um, and it worked until, until Apple decided to discontinue support for the 3GS, So then I had to do everything on my iPad, which I had bought an iPad 3 for myself for my 30th birthday 
because that was like something I really wanted. I felt that could help me out. I could go and write anywhere, you know, and stuff like that. Um, and so I kept doing that, kept doing that. And then also the, um, uh, the Trayvon Martin situation happened and I covered that pretty extensively and that helped get me some subscribers and some views and some money. Cause at the time YouTube wasn't, wasn't demonetizing controversial topics at the time they were allowing it to happen. Now, again, it's totally hit or miss. Uh, so I continued and continued and continued and, then around um, the first year was over, I had uh, about 715 subscribers, I think, in my first year. And then that was that was in uh, February, March 2013. And then February, March 2014, I had about, I think, 11,000 subscribers. And then 2015, it was like a close to, close to 50,000. And then here it is, you know end of 2017 and I'm, you know, got 153,000 subscribers. Um, and so a lot of this stuff kind of builds up and builds up and builds up. Yeah. So it just took a bit of time. It took a lot of time, a lot of effort I put in. Yeah. Um, and and I, you're doing some good growth right now too. I mean, I, I follow you in, um, in this, uh, YouTube count app and you know, it's, it's growth daily. You know, a little well, bit, I like a little to grow. Like I like growth girth as well. Also with, uh, but not for you, for someone else. Um, uh, you know, so, it's not the size of your channel that counts. It's how you use it. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm, I'm looking at my social blade right now and yeah, it's doing okay. I'm averaging 58 subscribers a day. It fluctuates. Right. And then, um, 52,000 views a day. Part of that too has to do with the fact there hasn't really been a lot of good news lately. It's been like today was nothing but Kevin Spacey and Paul Manafort. And it's like, eh, yeah. Eh, you know, like some of those things well, are just and not you fun. You're also no. trying to do your the more offbeat stories now too, right? Yes. Yeah, I like the offbeat stuff. I like the offbeat stuff because it's just more fun, in my opinion. Um, it's it's say it's, it. it's it's a. I'm not gonna say it. What the beat off joke? Whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah see, you live nah, alone, Eric. You I get your it. thinking. <laughs> No, it's it's uh it's yeah, I prefer covering the crazier side stories. So the problem with that too is sometimes it's like, you know, it's hard because the the crazy stuff can get pretty crazy sometimes and nobody wants to talk. Like you won't find a lot of like a lot of traction coming out of those kind of stories. So it requires a bit of a mixing of like certain style of videos, certain subject matters, and then you can experiment on the on the side. Um which is uh, interesting but becomes a bit like crazy on days like today when it's like, well, nothing really seems good. So yeah, there's that. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my story for the most part. I mean, and, and as you talked about before, you know, there is, you know, stuff with Gamergate that, that you were involved in that. Uh, I remember you talking before about that kind of helped propel your channel growth. Yeah, that boosted up. That was that would I would I would if I had to link back to one specific thing that got me to where I am today, it would definitely have been that. About now, I I know that at a certain point you had been swatted. Yes, I was swatted a year and a half ago. And uh, it was related to GamerGate or related to something? No, else? it was not. Oh, okay. As far as I know, it wasn't related to GamerGate. I can't publicly say who I think did it. Um, that has a lot to do with the fact that the FBI is still actively investigating. Um, but at the same time, it's been a year and a half and nothing has been done. So the likelihood of anything actually getting done is minimal. Yeah. Um, so uh, to a certain extent, you've made it <laughs> by being swatted. Sure, I guess. Yeah. If um, getting a shotgun in your face by a cop is considered making it, you know. <laughs> And I mean, now was the swatting was that um, after you started showing your face before you yeah. revealed your name or was your name already out there but not your um, no. address? It, it was uh, it was about I'm gonna say five months later after I started showing after I showed my face for the first time. What happened with that was uh, it was a blackmail attempt, mm. and uh, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I ended up getting uh, contacted by this troll who really hates a friend of mine. 
and hates him to the point of just, you know, pure rage and anger. And he had found out my Facebook. You know, he found out my name somehow. I still don't know how. I, I was usually pretty good at keeping it, keeping it quiet. Um, but then again, it might have been something that I had mentioned and they caught up on and they figured it out by Googling it, so on and so forth. Um, I have no idea. But uh, he wanted me to denounce my friend uh, or else he would release my identity. And so I got the email from him and then I immediately just, you know, grabbed my phone, shot a little video, said, screw it. This is who I am. This is my name. This is what I look like. You know, if you want me, come get me, you know, F you sort of thing. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that, that worked out in my favor. I mean, I hate looking at myself. I think as many people do, but, uh, I'm on camera and if I'm not on camera, then like the views actually go down. However weird that is. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, you know, was kind of more of a, a side tangent to the, the main thing. I just kind of wanted to give the viewers that might not be familiar with you and your backstory, just like kind of a little bit of a you know, a, a well-rounded picture of, of your journey. Um, <laughs> Internet harassment can happen to anyone. That's just, I think the key takeaway here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but recently because of your growth on YouTube, you, you mentioned that you had um, back in the day, your, your friend who was able to pay for his rent in studio city in LA. Well, you've been able to purchase a home. Thanks to YouTube. I have been able to. Yeah. I mean, it's not specifically just that. Also, my girlfriend has a good job. So there there was, um, you know, it was combined efforts. But yeah. Yeah. I, I only own a home, um, which is crazy to think of. Uh, um, it's fine. <laughs> but it's cool because I, I I live in the forest and that's nice, you know. Deer come through my yard every day, so can't complain. I knew you were a fairy. Furry. Fur furry. You called me a fairy. Fur you, you know, fairy is Kevin Spacey. Okay, <laughs> furry is uh, someone who wears animal suits and has sex. Both it's also known as yiffing. And we're probably going to get another boo from Taylor here in a moment. He's in the chat room, if you didn't notice. Taylor Richards, another friend of ours. Hey, from what's back up, in man? I was seeing Taylor. I didn't even see my comments on too. His second one was boo to one of the comments <laughs> I made. So. Eric makes a lot of bad jokes. People yeah. need to realize this, whoever's watching. Um, and then we make fun of him for those bad jokes. Well, that's kind of part of the thing is I mostly make bad well, jokes, <laughs> right? Uh, sure. <laughs> Purposefully. <laughs> that's a nice excuse. That's, that's, that's how you, that's how you do it. That's how you say it right yeah. there. All right. So we talked about your growth. We talked about, um, your start, your, your growth, and being able to buy a house. And then this last spring, something happened. Adpocalypse. Uh, I, I long for the day that that's over with. So it's not over with? Not 100%, no. Um, they're working on it. It's uh, It probably won't be better or back to the way it was for quite some time. Um, let's see how 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 do we describe this um, uh, in in a simple like without going deep in into um, all the things about it. Uh, let's just say that um, adpocalypse. It's a it's a couplefold. A there is a rash of demonetization across. Uh, across videos where you start having videos uh, no, uh, being deemed advertiser unfriendly. But then yeah. also, uh, like, because at, at first you weren't hit by that, but I remember you talking about how they, you, you were still having your same amount of views per video, but you were noticing they weren't serving as many ads on them, and so your income had dropped per video um 
Yeah. Well, what happened with that was – I'm trying to think of the best way to summarize it. So it, it, it's basically like a month-to-month thing from what I can gather. Um, in the tail end of March is when all the advertisers pulled out uh, and – uh, you know, they it was April and halfway through May was just horrible, was just super bad. Then halfway through the back half of May and all of June, it was good. Like ads were up. People were making money. I mean, like back to what it felt like, you know, it should be. And then July rolls around and it just dies again. July and August were terrible. Um, and then September or in the beginning of August is when they, they announced the limited ad state, when they announced the, you could, you could, uh, you know, you, you could, um, request a review on the video, so to speak. Right. And so I started picking with, up a little bit. Caveat, you had to have a thousand views within a week, right? Yeah. But the thing is, though, that's not, but that's, I, you know what, that, I don't think that's true because I've had videos get remonetized, approved, oh. um, and I haven't even published them yet. Like I'll, I'll pre-record content and then I'll go and I'll put it out uh, or I'll, I'll leave it in like, you know, schedule mode. It will get hit and I'll go and I'll, I'll set it to approve, you know, a request or approval. And then it will be up before the video goes live. Um, and on, on my movie channel, three book theater, a lot of the videos don't break a thousand views. And if they get hit, then um, I've had those all approved. So, so you're I, I don't able think to that... still hit the appeal link even if it hasn't hit that threshold. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So they have, okay. there hasn't been anything there that's been um, that's been bad or whatever. And I do want to apologize to anyone watching about the the current quality of my video. For some reason, Logitech is having just a hell of a time um, with everything. So I look very blue <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> so I better I, than I, you I apologize. looking green. Yeah. Yeah, that's another issue I'm having right now. Part of, part of the problem of being a, a YouTuber is that nothing ever looks as good as you want it to. Um, there's always problems, you know. So you go and you buy more gear, thinking that's going to help. It it generally never does. Uh, you know, I, I bought a new camera, and, and yes, the quality of my vlogs, the the picture quality has gone up, but I also complicated my workflow threefold. So get yep. a new laptop, get a new camera, and and make it harder to edit because now I have to deal with wide gamut, you know, and HDR and and log profiles and and all that fun stuff. Yeah, fun. I, so. I bought a, a Panasonic 4K camcorder uh, with decent reviews and uh, a, an HDMI to USB grabber. Um, and uh, yeah, it look the it looks. Was it the, the Elgato one? Not the Elgato. I have an Elgato. This one is an Avio, uh, an AV, an AV dash IO okay. HD grabber. It was like four hundred. I probably should not have spent the money on it. That's probably um, the that's one. That's what credit I cards are for. I got the Elgato one, and it does not work with the back properly. I have to use you, their yeah, software. This one's it doesn't work specifically for that. Yeah, I mean, it works wonderfully, but it gives me this green tint, and I'm, mm. I don't know if it's a firmware issue. I just upgraded the firmware. Funny, I just upgraded the firmware the other day, played around with it, got the color looking pretty good to where I was happy with it, and then, and then, and then, like all of a sudden, uh, I turn off the camera, and like it resets all of my settings every time, and it might be because I have it plugged into my computer instead of into the, uh, into a wall socket, and that might be the problem why it's not holding itself in terms of, I don't know, it's annoying, yeah. it's frustrating. I shot something on um, on Saturday, and I was able to use the Elgato to record my gameplay footage because I'm going to do a React video with my dad playing the new Super Mario Odyssey. And so nice. I was able to record the gameplay footage just using the Elgato software. And then I just recorded with my camera, and then I was able to sync them up in Final Cut Pro. But, you know forget being able to use my my gh5 for my live stream because it doesn't work with obs or wirecast on the mac and you complain to them oh yeah it works on windows well i i, I don't have windows that's your problem right there <sighs> anyway um <laughs> So back to the adpocalypse. So we we went through a few different things. Uh, you know, there's a couple of waves. I know one of them was because the advertisers pulled out. 
The second wave, I believe, was related to a, a hack with one of the ad placement agencies. But, you know, regardless. Well, that, of... yeah, there's I haven't ever been able to find more information on that. Mm. So I don't know if that was actually 100 okay. percent what the outcome to that was. OK, but uh, that might have been. See, but see, there's another theory here, too, is during the summer months, like especially July, for example, when uh, the ads were were all showing everything was green, it was all monetized, but no ads were playing. Um, it's because everything was already in a limited ad state at that point. They just weren't telling you it was a limited ad state, but it was there. Oh. And in August is when they introduced the new feature to to uh, request the um, the review. Yeah. So. So everyone got hosed in July super bad uh, because they were trying to test the algorithm. And, of course, this is a problem. This is actually one of the reasons why um, – and I did see this from James in the chat – why there's actually a lawsuit. There's a couple lawsuits pending against uh, uh, YouTube right now. One of them is from a channel called Zombie Go Boom or whatever. And they do uh, zombie – you know, they do like prosthetics. Like they make zombie prosthetics and then they destroy them using like – household items like how it would work on a zombie sort of thing and it's pretty fun stuff and they um uh they're suing them because basically google and youtube gave youtubers zero time to prepare yeah um and they view that as you know their lawyer says they have an actionable case there or at least they're trying i think to put together a class action or something uh, i have a feeling we'll see a class action against them and i have a feeling a lot of content creators are going to jump in and probably not because they want to get any money out of YouTube. They're not going to get it, you know, but they just want YouTube to change. They want YouTube to not have knee jerk reacted the way that they did, considering the fact that when the situation went down and it was because there was extremist content that was found to be running ads next to it. Um, one of the vice presidents of YouTube, I forget, or Google had said that this was a problem that they knew about, but it was one one thousandth of yeah. an issue. Um, it was so small that it made, you know, it was like nothing, but they knew about it and it was, it, no one ever cared. And it wasn't until the wall street journal ran its hit pieces that we got like ourselves in PewDiePie situation. and yeah. yeah, PewDiePie. And then the, 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 the chief Keith music video that had the N word in the title of it that someone had uploaded and it was the N word with the hard R. Um, and it had about 260,000 views or something like that. So you would think that would be a fair amount of money. So it could maybe have an argument there as to why this this whole thing would take place. Twenty dollars and forty four cents is how much that video made over six months. Twenty dollars and forty four cents. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That that crippled everybody. Over twenty dollars is what crippled everybody. Um, it's insane. It's just yeah. it's so weird and so crazy. The views are still there. The eyeballs are still there. Uh, you know, clearly there is no issue with running ads and this kind of stuff. But it's like we've been seeing all of 2017. Um, honest to God, and I, this is the thing, man, is – and you'll hear people say this. The Wall Street Journal went looking after this situation because Trump won. And I, I, I'm, I don't feel I'm out of place saying that. Um they would not have gone and looked at this, I think, yeah. had it not been for the rise of conservative commentary on YouTube. Yeah. Well, and, you know, there's like the the hypocritical thing about, you know, the Wall Street Journal. Like like we we talk specifically about maybe the, the Las Vegas shooting where uh, Casey Neistat's video got demonetized where he was like, hey, all the money from this I'm going to give to, you know, the victims of the shooting. And the video got demonetized and yet... Um, it was a Jimmy Kimmel's video that was very political. Well, that's an entirely that. different situation, though. Yeah. Like, Jimmy Kimmel, okay, so Casey Neistat was going through Google AdSense when he, when he did that. Whereas Jimmy Kimmel and their team brought advertisers to YouTube, to Google. They sold the ad spaces themselves. Right. Well, so and, that's and going on that same thing, though, the, this entire thing of like, oh, these controversial topics getting demonetized and yet you got for the exact same things there's ads on the washington post and and you know uh all these other you know news outlets they're not going to stop running ads just because the story you know is about a mass shooting yeah 
what that mostly boils down to is <sighs> like I think what it boils down to for the most is that they don't view what we do as legitimate. Um, they don't do they don't view what we do as uh, as as you know as professional as they. I mean, it's the same thing as being legitimate. Yeah. And, um, what and would so you they say to them. Maybe you're right in some respects. Maybe you're wrong in some respects. But um, at the same time, we all have the we all have the ability to exist. But I think what it is is because we're not controlled by cor- – see, we, we, we say we're not controlled by corporate media. We're not controlled by the big businesses, which is generally BS because in essence, we still want to earn money and we do that through Google AdSense or if we yeah. can get people to donate to our Patreon. Oh, but even that's a pain in the ass. So you're just like, how do you do it? Yeah. So you, you know, are I, kind I of- was thinking – you're right. I was thinking, oh, yeah, well, on YouTube, we, we don't have to be beholden to – but no, you're right. The fact that we're – beholden to youtube itself wow that's yeah it's it's just it's just you know meet this meet the new boss same as the old boss type thing (laughs) but we also but we do have the ability though to operate in a different spectrum whereas we cover the news they report on the news but their viewership is down their viewership has been declining for years and that's not our fault we, on the other hand, though, are unfiltered. We can say what we want. We're not worried about losing our jobs if we say the wrong thing, whereas a lot of people out there are worried that they'll lose their job if they say how they truly feel. So what they do is they find people out there, people like myself and others, who who speak their opinion and speak their truth, and then they watch us or they might contribute financially via Patreon or tip you know, in a donation box or whatever – because yeah. that's their way of helping out, getting their particular viewpoints out. The and problem that's with it is that it's more than just these companies too, because you see people like one someone just says the wrong thing, like PewDiePie, and it's uh, to to quote last week's South Park, it becomes a witch pursuit thing. Yep, as we've seen, as we've seen today, um, yeah, it's a witch pursuit thing, exactly. And uh, I, I presume you're referring to Kevin Spacey. Yeah, I mean Kevin. I, don't I, I kind me of wrong. felt that same way too. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think what he did or what he admitted to maybe allegedly doing is right at all. I think that it was a bad move, and I think he should apologize. But it's been 31 years. What do you want to happen? That is a legit question. It's not like the man made the claim is destitute. It's not like he's not on Star Trek Discovery. You know, not like he hasn't been working. I'm, I'm like, what do you want at this point? Yeah. What do you want? Like, that's what I'd ask him. Like, what do you want? Yeah. But instead, it's now I'm seeing articles saying move over Harvey Weinstein. It's Kevin Spacey's yeah. turn as if to indicate at, at any point in time what he did has the same, you know, is the same level as Harvey Weinstein. The, the you know, scary but the thing for me is all of these the the uh, now granted with with Harvey Weinstein and James Tobeck there are so many similar stories that have come out it's hard to ignore but yeah. none of these have gone through the court and no and and you, you've seen my videos I talk yeah. about this frequently Tumblr Twitter Facebook social media not nine one one um if there is a, if there is a legal matter you need to contact the authorities yeah. they're the only ones that can help you. Uh, and this whole, you know, the thing is, like, I, I, you know, I've joked on Twitter, I might have crappy opinions, but you'll never hear about me in a sexual assault case, um, because it just simply won't have ever happened. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, if you the same... make the wrong <laughs> joke, they will try and throw that at you anyway to try and silence you and get you demonetized off, you know, across the board. And, oh yeah. And off your channel. Well, that, well, that's kind of that goes get... back to the point I was trying to make of it. It, it frustrates more than just these organizations that frustrate so many people that they will take whatever they can blow it out of proportion to try and ruin the little independent voices yep yep and this is this is a problem with the gotcha media and the gotcha media is is a you know permeates on both sides and we've seen a huge push now uh with that as a result of the of the election um, and the subsequent, <laughs> the subsequent last like ten months, almost. Um, and it's just, it's yeah. I don't know. People want there to be a bad guy. They want there to be a villain that they can 
do something about. And I think a lot of the witch hunt, a lot of the stuff we're seeing um, has a lot to do with, with people feeling helpless over uh, Trump. And this is – I'm referring predominantly to the entertainment industry. Uh, it's an industry that both you and I love. Um, and, and, you know, but I'm watching it cannibalize itself and I mean, holy crap, like what's going to be next? Who, who's going to be next? I saw, did you see last night on Twitter? It was when Kevin Spacey was trending. Did you see what was trending right underneath Kevin Spacey? No, I, I did Brian Singer. And if you go and you, if you, I was reading those tweets and they're like, oh, I hope Brian Singer's next. And, and they, there was a thing a couple of years ago where he was accused of, of assaulting uh, a young guy. Uh, it, I, I think he was like proven. He wasn't even in that state at the time. He wasn't in the country at the time. Yeah. The guy had said that they'd gone to Hawaii. He flew him out to Hawaii, him and another producer flew him out to Hawaii. But then 20th century Fox produced crew call sheets from the production of X-Men in the summer of 1999. And, and that was like, well, the director of the movie, the one you're accusing of this, was on the you know other side of Canada. Uh, you were in Hawaii. He was on the other side of Canada. Like there's just no way he made it there, yeah. and that made him drop the case. Um, and and that's the whole situation. Is like you know people. I mean I don't know if Brian Singer's done anything bad. I've seen photos from the parties that him and Roland Emmerich throw in West Hollywood. Um, you know, and there's been there's been a lot of accusations of. Uh, of those kind of situations with 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 those young men that go to those parties, and again, accusations aren't the law. You know, you're not going to get justice yeah. from an accusation. You have to go file a police report. Yeah. Um, so let, let's you know kind of bring this back to our main topic. With you know, there, yeah. there's, I, I think it just goes to show just what kind of a climate there is for everything that that's going on, and then and. To, because of all this and or in along in parallel to all of what we've just been talking about is ads coming down and the topic of this video is how YouTube demonetization hurts creators it does or how does it or just how does it how does oh it? well okay so what it does is it, it it's it demoralizes you it, it really demoralizes you because, you know, not everyone produces the same quality of content. I think that's a good way to describe it. You know, like <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you know, I do what I do in a certain fashion. <laughs> but I think I still add value yeah. to the conversation. I, and I think that's proven by my subscriber count as well as my my daily view count and my, you know, monthly and everything else. And it, But it demoralizes you when this is what you cover. Because what else am I supposed to do? Right. I, I started uh, earlier this year. I started uh, my movie news channel hoping to transition. But even that's going up against a whole bunch of other people. You know, it's a huge market to jump into. Current event news is a huge market to get into as well. But it's like, yeah, I've built that up and whatever. So so the demonetization, it just impacts you because it, it makes you just like not care. And it, that's that's sad mm -hmm. to say because it's like it shouldn't be about that. You know what I mean? So you're, it's you're, more than just making it hard to pay your bills and pay your mortgage or your rent. It's it, it, there. There's an emotional aspect to it that makes you just want to give up, which could completely derail your channel. Yeah, because you have to daily uploads are what the algorithm craves. Yeah. Uh, daily uploads longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> if you can do that, longer than 10. Hmm. yeah, pretty much. Um, and they want you to, they want you to post. I mean, I talked to a guy when I was at vid summit and I told him kind of what's going on with my channel. I do three videos a day and I'm like, do you have any suggestion for how I can reach, you know, more of my audience? And he goes, yeah, try four videos a day. And I'm like, dude, like, okay. Like I don't have like, I mean, I'm getting a cold right now that a lot of it has to do with the fact that I just I work seven days a week, you know, and so I run myself down pretty fast because yeah. having that work bat life balance is difficult um, because I, for one, I, know like, I have to upload more often and I yeah. have trouble just balancing my day job and editing my vlog. And my last episode took me three weeks to edit because it was yeah. a complicated episode. No, that's, that's part of it, man. I mean, I do most of my stuff in one in one go. 
Yeah. I've also uploaded over 4,000 videos over the span of nearly six years. So I've, I've posted a lot of content. Yeah, I think um, I'm at like 86 videos or something like that right now. Do that in a month. Yeah. I've also you know. got like a fraction of your views. I, I'm at like 601 right now. I've been like bordering <laughs> here. I was like, I was just underneath and then finally came up and I've been like 601, 600, 601, 602, 601, 600, 601. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. what the heck? I literally, I gain one, I lose one. I gain one, I lose one. I'm like, what the heck is going on? That happens to me all the time, man. Like, it's been going up for me, but there are, like, you. It, it, there's been, like, days where it just, like, stagnates. Like, this year, yeah. this year has stagnated. I This is going to sound bad how I say this, but so far this year, I've only gone up about 20,000, if not 18 to 20,000 subscribers. Only. Right. And my channel size, that should not be a thing at the rate I upload and everything else that should not be a thing. But. Yeah, I know one of the big things that with me is I'm just not uploading consistently enough. It's one of the reasons I'm doing this live. So, I mean, it's just it's, you know. But... Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. No, go ahead. Uh, well, that's one of the reasons I I started doing this, you know, regular live stream. Is so I'm like, well, at least I'm at least getting one live stream up a week if I'm not getting a vlog up. Yeah. So. And no, I'm going to be man. trying to the the stuff I'm going to be shooting from here on out. Once I catch up, I've got one video from Comic Con to catch up on, and then I've got a couple more that I've shot recently that I think it's going to be a little easier to edit together or still be have all that B-roll and the good stuff, but I, I'm trying to shoot it a little easier to go like, okay, here's my three act structure that I shot in my head. Here's all, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to make it a little easier on myself to alleviate the, the problems I've painted myself into with my workflow. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's like, I do three videos a day and that's always like, what the hell do I talk about? Yeah. You know, like what's going to be the most intriguing thing. And there's days where there's like a lot of stuff to talk about. So stuff falls through the cracks. And then there's days where you're just like nothing really seems good for like a standalone video. Like yeah. nothing I can I can at least get to like seven, seven minutes or something. Even though YouTube might want me to do 10, my average view, can, my average watch time per per user is about five minutes and 40 seconds. Um, and so it's like, OK, well, then. I've tried making videos at five minutes and 40 seconds. Here's the thing with that though. You, you don't make any damn money. Um, they want you to do the longer than 10 minutes, which is one of the reasons why, like, I don't know if you saw my live stream last night. Um, no, I, I didn't get a chance to, I was wrapping things up with the film festival. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, to, I totally understand that. I did a, I haven't even watched I, Star Trek discovery yet. Oh, you want me to tell you what happens? No, you, they all die. I'm, I'm guessing that's, that's, there's a time loop thing and they undie. Only one way to find out. <laughs> Gotta watch the episode, Aaron. <laughs> I know there was a lot of jokes because they had problems with their, their live stream the week before. And then the preview for the this last week was them being caught in the temporal loop. And so people were joking around on Twitter about the next episode being about people's experience with the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, I ran into I, the I, same problem. I tried watching it. It kept like repeating. It was really weird. I shut it off for a couple hours and went back later. Uh, I just I wait for it to appear on certain certain places and then I just watch it. Usually within 20 minutes of the episode ending. Yeah. So going <laughs> back to the adpocalypse, did you see this like the first round? It it you saw it hit you. You said right back in like April. April, yeah. I noticed it back in April, yeah. But you didn't start getting the actual demonetizations until uh, a little later on. The, where no, you no, saw no. The I started. I started. Signs. The well, we all got hit with the limited the limited dollar signs back in August is when that first rolled out. Um. But I started noticing the drop in revenue in April, and so I was with an I was with the, an MCN at the time. Uh, MCN stands for Multi Channel Network. Um, if I had to give any YouTuber a piece of advice, it would be never ever join a multi channel network ever. Period. Ever. 
I don't care what yeah. it is. Never do it. I used to be with Maker. I I would say the same thing. They, you know, promised me all these things, and then they gave me bad advice that actually caused me to not upload to my channel for almost two years. Yeah. Or they because they, 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 they cycle like people in so fast. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's that's what they, they do. They, oh. they, they looked at my analytics, said, oh, your watch time. At the time, now my watch time has improved, but at the time, my watch time was three minutes. They said, oh, you should make videos that are three to five minutes long. And I'm like, I, that, that doesn't fit with my format at all. Maybe they should have worked with me to figure out how to make more engaging content or figure out, is there something in my videos that is causing people to tune out early on? Yeah. Um, and instead, they just looked at the watch time and said, you should need to make shorter videos. Stupidest advice that they ever gave me. Stupidest yeah. advice I ever took because I changed my format and it didn't work. Uh, yeah, you can't out. ever really change your format. Like, I mean, like, you really can't change your format very well. I tried I tried that back in, uh, back in April. Right after I moved, I had made the decision. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn my channel – my main channel into the movie news channel. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a, a a a cut and dry thing, and you know I'll do the current events into like maybe a daily show or something with a couple stories wrapped up into one, kind of similar to um, what I was trying to do. And uh, that's just hard. That's actually harder to do for some reason for me, right? Well, doing like mine, multiple stories in one video. Mine was more. I was trying to go with. I did three episodes of AMK TV. And I was trying to sit down and I wanted to do a more talking to the camera thing. Yeah. But I had specific things I wanted to talk about. So I actually wrote out exactly, you know, I know how to write form how I talk. So I wrote out what I wanted to say as if I was writing out a speech. But then I hadn't like really rehearsed it or prepared it. So I would literally record a sentence or less, get that, move to the next one, and then chop it together. And it just like I and they feel so artificial and and cold because it didn't have there wasn't anything natural about them. now maybe if i kept going i would have been able to to work out the kinks but it just it wasn't right for me it didn't have that connection i was looking for so um anyway are you uh still there i think uh did you freeze on me freeze? no i'm I, no i'm here you okay. uh you froze on me too okay yeah well i think i'm back um, so one of the things, you know, I wanted to kind of come back up to what's the state of the adpocalypse now. Um, by the way, your camera got blown out again. Yeah, I know. It just, I, I just checked it and it was all, all of a sudden it just, um, it reset all of a sudden it just totally oh, kicked fine. back in that all of my set right there. All right. I'm saving that. Yeah. Cause when it, when it kicked back in, it just auto set it, reset everything on my I hate Logitech. Uh, and I, I actually hate Skype, too. Um, that's half the problem here. Um, so, you know, we we're talking a little bit, uh, you know, the, the current state of the adpocalypse where, you know, what happened recently with Casey Neistat and how he posted the video. And then, of course, he, he even like his video of him going to Indonesia got um, flagged. And then they overturned it. Uh, and then there was something that came out just uh, just today. from and, and we were commenting before the show that they didn't even bother putting it on the creator blog. They put it on the YouTube help forum on uh, uh, improving the software. That it's going to result in 30% fewer demonetizations. Um one of the things I was kind of frustrated with was the fact that they didn't say anything about the the human review. But as you said, there isn't that limit that they said that really was there before. So that eliminates yeah. that. But um, let, let's talk about what steps YouTube has taken here. Is this enough? Is it a step in the right direction? Um um, no, I mean, it's a step in the right direction, but what they need is they need like what, here's, here's my theory. One of the things they said right now, it's been a month, um, or it's been like two months of this, you know, manual review nonsense. And they said now 30% fewer, which is funny too, because the day after they said that all of my videos that I posted that day got flagged. 
uh, and it took him two days to approve it. So it's kind of like, yeah, thanks a lot, you know. Uh, and stuff like GameStop releasing a new uh, – it was like gaming-related content. Nothing violent even said got hit. Uh, so it's it's one of those angles that they they you know it's 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 completely random it feels like uh, because like I said my um, I did a video about Kevin Spacey and you know uh, everything going on with that and that's monetized right now no problems but tomorrow it's likely that it will be it will be hit um, they need to they need to just uh, they need to either release what information is acceptable and appropriate. Or they need to just get rid of the program and go back to business as usual and just tell the advertisers deal with it. Um, and honestly, if they just if they if they grab the advertisers by the scrope and said, "We're coming into the holiday season. We're we're you know Halloween's tomorrow. Once we hit November first, it's full on. It's full steam ahead with this stuff. It, you know, and these are people that make videos and there's ads. There's eyeballs on it. There's more eyeballs on this. There's what they said. The average person." watches 30 hours of youtube a month right like r roughly around that amount um there's eyeballs there and uh there are youtubers that that get hundreds of thousands of views a day um and you know people watch their content and the fact that they're sitting there going like oh well this isn't advertising no f you it is you know it is yeah but and, it, and the advertising it goes back to the context thing too because just mentioning like Casey's video about the the tragedy just mentioning hey something happened let's raise money is not should not be demonetized yeah because of context and that's something that an algorithm will never pick up on even if they specifically say hey any videos talking about this demonetize they they shouldn't do that yeah oh well, here's something real quick so it says google ceo viewers accrue a hundred million hours of daily YouTube watch from their living rooms. Hundred for so just this is from the Google CEO, right? Um, if 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 a hundred million hours a day of content is watched from people's living rooms on their smart devices, it is absolutely unacceptable that they are that they're running into this problem, especially when it comes down to the fact that it was a hit piece. That I do believe was completely manufactured, or yeah. it's a, a one in a million fluke. But that is just the most yeah. asinine thing I've ever heard of. Yeah. With this, it's this utter nonsense. I mean, and we know for a fact that the thing with PewDiePie, at least the obviously him saying the N word in the live stream was a different story. But um, that first story, it was all taken out of context. Yeah. It so is. there's something in. Um, in the uh, chat, live chat here that um, was actually up a bit ago and we haven't touched on it. I want to kind of go back to it. It's from uh, Musical Antihero. He said a while back, have you guys seen the YouTube sensitive content evaluation guidelines? The ones that YouTube's sending to their third party ad readers? Uh, I have not, no. And then uh, in response to Aaron Collins, he says, you have no, uh, Aaron says YouTube's declared war on us content creators. Um, and he says, you have no idea the content rating guidelines they're using for EWOQ ad ratings are downright primitive, designed in 2009. Those are the ones they're using the results of to train their AI and to manually. I, how did I not hear about this? That's the thing. How did I not hear about this? Um, they're using so I did that the videos have been removed from YouTube knee-jerk reaction and their first idea was to go well we've got these Raiders working for Google just have to do it for YouTube too hmm. so sounds like something to uh, look into for a future video uh, well I found the PDF I just googled it real quick and then I came across a PDF, but there's no like content flowing back to it that I can tell. Okay. Um, so I don't see like there's no header, there's no like I don't know I don't know how, I don't know how true this is or not. Okay. Um, but I here's the thing I didn't hear about this. Um, which is really interesting. And if there is truth to it, then that makes it kind of scary. 
Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to read through this. Absolutely. But um, so thank you, musical antihero for that. Yeah, thank you. I'd never heard of that before. And that's odd because I do this as like I pay attention to what's going on. And no one I know was talking about this. Yeah. No one even even brought it up to me at all. Yeah. I am thankful that none of my videos have been hit by the the limited ad or demonetization yet. I just have like two videos with Nintendo content, so they've claimed it because I'm part of the Nintendo Creators Program. Can't do any more live streaming. Thanks a lot, Nintendo. Um, but uh, I mean, I did notice that I've got some of my previous live stream episodes are don't show up in restricted mode. I think I mentioned that in one of your chat rooms. I tried submitting something to have them look at it. I haven't checked in the last week or two to see if they fixed it, but that hit me kind of weird. Yeah. It was like, why are these live streams? There's nothing in these live streams. Now, granted, I have not, like on all my vlogs, I pay for closed captioning. And I don't do that for my live streams because they're so long. It would cost me a, a lot more money um, to do that. But, um, but yeah, yeah, see, I don't think I would do most of my audience, like 90% of my audience is in the U.S. Yeah. So I, I well, it's the closed captioning for more of an accessibility and an SEO. Um, and also if I upload my content up to Facebook natively, then I can include that. And if someone has it where the the audio doesn't autoplay, then the captions immediately come up if you have captions so that they start okay. seeing, you know, what that is. That's the, you know, and I'm, I'm doing it more to be a good, you know, um, a good accessibility partner with, you know, um, just to say, hey, I, I make my stuff accessible as much as I can. I mean, I, the service I use is a dollar a minute. So when I'm uploading a couple of videos a week, it costs me twenty, maybe twenty bucks, you know, ten to twenty bucks a week to to caption. So it's not a big deal. But no, uh, so I, I did quickly look into it here. That that uh, that file going around about the sensitive content evaluation um, does appear to be fake, um, okay. only because there's no branding on the document. Mm. So there's no YouTube branding. It, I'd look into it a bit more, but uh, it looks like it's, <laughs> it looks like it's possible that it's uh, it's not real. Um, but uh, we'll have to wait and find out. Yeah. All right, so we are coming up on an hour here. Um, what more do you think? YouTube can and should be doing and what can we as creators do to try and mitigate demonetization presuming that our channels might be getting hit by something like that um communication is what I would like to see yes that, you know that not a big month thing that that Casey hit on in his video yeah they don't they don't talk about it they don't mention it you know we what we need is like a i mean what what's the most we've heard come out of the ceo of youtube recently she made a youtube video that she was in for all of nine seconds right that's yeah. it you know and it had the rock in it um yeah i i think casey actually put it the perfect way this problem is like you working for your boss and something happens to your paycheck and your boss is unavailable for you to call and say, hey, what's going on? I don't understand why my paycheck is half of what it normally is. Yeah. And it's just it's uh, but the problem at the thing at the same time, though, we we're not employees of Google or YouTube. We're independent freelance contractors. So rules. <laughs> don't always apply to us in the same fashion that it, that we would like them to. And uh, that's just the damn truth of it. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of beholden to them and we have to just wait and see what's going to happen next. I, I think they're trying to work on it because it's impacting them. I mean, yeah. they, they're, they're looking bad. 
Um, they know that corporate uh, corporate entities have taken over the front page. And um, Facebook is chomping at the bit to take all their creators away. Well, that's only if Facebook would offer an incentive program. They don't. There's no incentive unless you are big. It, it, it's like in beta uh, and they, right now, I, yeah. Well, it's been in beta for a couple of years. So, and the thing is, too, it's like they've also been called out for how for uh, for their Facebook views, and how they had basically overcharged advertisers like two hundred million dollars. I want to say in twenty sixteen, wow. because it's, they I, count. I hadn't heard of that. Yeah, there was like a huge thing with that because it, the ways that their algorithm miscalculated views. So when you see when you see a video on on Facebook and it says it has like you know eighteen million views. You have to ask yourself how much of that is actually yeah. them watching the whole video. Yeah. YouTube or even to get a, a view, significant amount. Yeah, it's three seconds on on a Facebook video to uh, to make it give it a view count to give it to give it a view. How much is it on YouTube? Thirty seconds. Okay. Okay. So, so and I've got and I've got about a twenty percent drop off after eight seconds on every video. Not even kidding. Like if you go and look at your average drop off rate, it's like. Yeah. The it's about eight seconds. I lose I lose between eighteen and twenty percent of my audience, and that's and, and so I thought because I put the little Amazon logo in front, the little Amazon pitch in front, that uh, that people would you know like that would be the reason for it. And it turns out the answer to that is no. They were just doing that anyway. Oh, <laughs> so it's it's like all right, um, and Amazon the affiliate sales through that's been helpful. Okay. Uh, it's dropped off. It's dropped off a lot this this month. Like, oh boy! But I also haven't really pushed it at all this month. Um, yeah. I, uh, well, and so, what are some of the things that you've done to combat your your ad rates dropping? The Amazon affiliate links is one. Uh, I have got Patreon. Your Patreon. Yeah. Um, and then also, uh, believe it or not, my movie news channel, Three Buck Theater, pulls out a little bit, a couple, a couple hundred extra a month is what I get out of that channel. Okay. Um, just to like, you know, and that's when I have the energy to do it uh, is the thing. And I try, like, I burn the candle at both ends all the damn time. Um, and that's like, to, I, even like today, I woke up feeling like, or yesterday, I woke up feeling like garbage. Uh, and today, I feel like I feel even worse. And I'm like, oh no, I gotta, I got stuff to do this week. I can't get sick. So I'm like, you know, chucking back freaking vitamin C and I've got Sudafed I've got to take here pretty soon and, you know, like all this stuff I got to take just to kind of get it through my system so I can try to get it out of me. Because like when I'm when I'm ill, I can't work as much because right. it hurts to talk or whatever or my energy level is shot and like, well, that's money. And when you're, you know, soon to be like the single income household because, you know, your girlfriend's going to go on maternity leave for three months – uh, it's like, oh, sh we got to get on this thing. So, um, yeah, there's that. And then, like, uh, uh, people donate. I do live streams. Live streams are the best. Okay. Um, for me, live streams have been a huge, huge help well, when uh, I get yeah, Super Chat. Yeah, with Super Chat. And... But here's the thing with Super Chat. Super Chat takes freaking 30%. YouTube takes 30% of Super Chat donations. How much do you think they should take? I mean, they are providing five percent, five percent, five percent. You want to cut? You get five percent, because you're an agent would get ten percent, right? An agent would at least bring you the people or bring you the the deals. Well, you know the ads that they're serving up on on the videos, they're taking forty five percent, forty percent. Uh, yeah, something like yeah. that. So somewhere yeah. between forty and fifty. And yet, somehow YouTube operates at a loss. Really? Yeah. Okay. So that's the that's the thing. Uh that's <laughs> so you know, I mean, but then again, as a whole for Google, I think YouTube only brings in like six percent of their total earnings. Okay. So like they, they don't out of the whole of YouTube, they don't bring in a lot. And I saw the question from Aaron Collins in the chat. Uh, asking what kind of videos do I make? Um, I do news commentary videos, current event news commentary coverage, um, both socio-political, uh, social, uh, actual political, you know, whatever's going on that I find to be interesting. I also run live streams where I cover the news. I just started a, a new series last night 
um, that's going to hopefully, hopefully one day become my flagship, which is called Rustled, which is like short for rustling of jimmies, which is an online, you know, t- slang term, um, whatever. So I th- thought it's kind of cute and everything else. And that whole thing is I just find 10. I, well, I have last night I went through 10 stories, which was a lot to go through in an hour and a half. But I went through 10 and I had an audience of about 350 people watching, um, which was not bad for the first time I live streamed in a, in a month you know, and, and everything else. And, uh, but I really feel like what helped out a lot with that were my thumbnail change beforehand. I would just do like the mundane match show and I would just have the thumbnail for that. Um, and it would just be the same outside of just the number change, but having the, the thumbnail change, I think brought in more people. And then consistently for the two hours that I was streaming, I had the 300 plus people. So it's, it's, that's a help right there. Um, it's uh you know oh musical antihero says he's the he's the originator of them like wait did you create the like did you create it as a joke or what like that's i'm curious to know hit me up on twitter uh at the at monday and matt that's where you find me and and speaking of that too i do want to let everyone know there is a link in the description down below to matt's channel if you've not subscribed to him yet um, and also, if you are a guest in here and haven't subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate a subscription. And please thumbs up the video if you liked uh, this discussion as well. And, and if you're watching a replay of this, feel free to leave some comments um, down below. But um, uh, I guess to wrap up, Matt, is there anything about this topic that we just haven't gotten to that we kind of need to discuss? Or have we really kind of... Got you know, it's – I think we've pretty much covered most of it. A lot of it really is simply this. They're not telling us what's going on. They're, they know there's outrage. They know people are hurting because they don't understand. So they don't know how to, they don't know how to get better because they haven't been told what's wrong. Um, you know, you have channels where people talk about like cats that are getting demonetized and they don't understand why. And so that builds resentment. And there, it's not even so much the money issue. It's, it's the fact people don't know. And that resentment is what's, what, is what's getting people to jump over to vid.me or to beg Amazon or Facebook to finally step up and provide an actual com- competition to YouTube. Yeah. And what, what I want, understanding that this is the biggest of the big and we're probably never going to see true competition unless it comes from Amazon – um, and, and maybe even Facebook, uh, is going to be I just almost joined the Amazon program like a year or two ago. And I actually had some issues with their terms of service and we ended up not uploading anything there. Oh, really? Yeah. I never looked into that at all. And I so... had a friend that works or at least at the time worked there. And I was actually talking to one of the people and I, asked them about it they were like oh yeah no we wouldn't really do that if we if you got it was basically they're they're going to put a cap on how much you could make based on how many views and they're like oh if you break through this threshold that's a good problem to have and we'll address it at the time and we were just like yeah you know just you saying well we won't really put this cap on you isn't good enough for us and we just said no thank you and walked away yeah no that's a problem that's a huge problem. You don't want there to be a cap on how much you can earn. It's not going to benefit anybody. You know, like, oh, you can only earn so much money. Well, then why the hell am I here? You know, but then again, if, it, if it's a guaranteed amount, then it's a, you know, bird in the hands, we're two in the bush. Yeah. So if, you know, if, if, if Facebook came along right now and offered like a set amount of money, but it was a guaranteed set amount of money, people would jump over in a heartbeat. Yeah. And that's just because that's – it's just – it's if it's guaranteed, people will make it work even though you could still run the gamble on YouTube and hopefully make a lot more. And it's like – you know, I did really well last year, um, better than, I, I, than I'd ever done in any career or any year ever. And this year was, was looking to be a lot bigger. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it should be a lot bigger. Uh, and here I am like, you know, j- I was just down at Babies R Us looking to wonder if I want to go get a job there part time as a cashier because that's kind of where things are at. My dad worked at Toys R Us. And from all the stories I heard, you don't want to work with. Them. No, I don't want to do retail, but I could go back to working at a movie theater because I did that for like yeah. 
a long time. You know, I'm just saying like that's kind of where things are at. Yeah. And yeah, you mentioned VidMe and I remember when you were in town for Vid Summit um, and you're kind of like you didn't go, go into a lot of the details, but you said that no one was actually talking about VidMe being a solution to this. Um, VidMe is, is not a permanent solution, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have the chance to find its audience. I don't know what that audience is going to be though. Um, I have a feeling it's going to do very well in the socio-political commentator market because those are the people that, that they feel are getting impacted the most and are looking to jump ship. And, uh, I think that's where a lot of stuff's going to be at, but even then, even then, they're they're not getting the traffic that they were uh, when they first came out, um, and I think part of that too, like I would use VidMe more often because I can just up, I can put in my YouTube yeah. link, I, I, and it will just rip it over there, which is fine with me. But then it auto, it auto posts it, and I'm like, no, 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 put that stuff in a private, so then I can I can rip it over, and then I can go over there, add the thumbnail, you know, and whatever, and then and then call it a day. Yeah, I'm right. Trying but to, uh, uh, I'm I'm looking down really quickly because I remembered I wanted to bring a couple of like Twitter conversations uh, from recently into this. One is there's a friend of mine who um, is a travel vlogger, and she had posted this was her her episode and it was her in a Target. And there was nothing, nothing wrong, completely innocuous. And her video had been demonetized. And someone had said, well, that's why I like VidMe. People can just tip you. And she goes, eh, yeah, but no one's tipped me in a while. And, yep. and she's actually probably doing better on VidMe than most of the people on the platform from what I can, what little I can tell. Well, I hear that a lot about VidMe. Is like, oh, you can you can get tipped, yeah. But I put a link in uh in my video description for PayPal donation. If you want to tip me via PayPal, you can do it right there, you know. And that's part of it. Is like the thing is that I don't like having to constantly remind people of it, but you also have to constantly remind people of it. Yeah, and then um, my friend Maxwell Glick, who is an actor and a YouTuber. His video, th this was today, this afternoon, around noon, his video where he bakes pumpkin spice cookies is not suitable for advertisers. After this post came out from YouTube. Yeah. He got, he got the, he got the black line through it. I couldn't see it all the way. Uh, no, let me, let me bring it back up. Um, no, it's the, uh, it's the yellow. Oh, okay. Well, yellow, he can at least request review. Yeah, and, it had know, the, and had the thing the is, there. but yeah, yeah. The thing is, though, you've got to got to remember, like everyone's getting hit, so that just it, it pretty much just means that everyone's getting hit, you know. So it's like I wouldn't read into it too much. It's not targeting anyone specifically. Right. Right. Everyone's like I said, getting. Targeted. I think I'm locking out that I haven't been hit yet. I'm wait. I keep checking my my videos. Like, when's it going to hit me? And thankfully, uh, well, it yeah, hasn't the, the, yet. The movie yeah. news channel gets hit occasionally. Like for some reason, my review of Stranger Things season two got hit, and I'm still waiting for like them to request or them to review it. Um, but everything else usually, if it gets hit on that channel, which I'm looking at right now, it generally tends to do okay. Like it, you know, I don't know why. I don't know why my Stranger Things two review, which I didn't even really swear in. Um, but what it is though too is they look for certain words. Yeah. The algorithm picks up on certain words. So if I said died, killed, whatever, <laughs> you know, um, like the, the live stream I did last night, um, I, you know, put in, I, I'm trying to put in the request to get it, you know, to get it monetized. Yeah. Um, I'll find out tomorrow, likely to have it probably not happening. Um, but, uh, you know, like that's like, if you don't get a video monetized, the likelihood of it getting out there into the, <laughs> into the, into the ether, so to speak, is just going to be, um, it, it gets it gets blocked so much. It's so weird. All right. It's it's just an annoyance. The whole thing is a a damn annoyance. Yeah, I'm just responding to a comment really quickly in the chat room. So 
So, all right. Um, yeah, I think we've kind of covered everything here. Uh, you know, the, this we discussed this obviously. This very much hurts people. Um, but there's also no like there's little things we can do, but there's no one good way to solve it other than YouTube finally realizing they need to be more communicative with us and and maybe set those guidelines of if you do this you will get demonetized otherwise we won't type of thing yep it'd be nice if uh, we could know what's going on because I'd like to be more prepared and that's the thing if we're prepared then we can at least work on it yeah and you think that really the demonetization should be reserved for the more extreme cases where I, it, it will, the thing is the, the alg you, you know as well as I do the algorithm is learning yeah right the algorithm is that's why I say it's eventually going to get better it's gonna it's gonna know what to look for but for right now it's learning so everyone's getting hurt you know it's yeah. it's like that abusive father that's just like I'm doing this for your own good you know because down the road you're gonna thank me for this level of abuse sort of thing <laughs> it's a horrible <laughs> now, get your spanking. yeah Go over here. Come over here. Bring me the belt. Um, now, do you think this algorithm is better or worse than had YouTube actually gone through with their YouTube Heroes program that they proposed? I I'm hearing that the YouTube program is still a thing. Oh really? Um, it's possible that the content is being flagged by people. I, well, I don't know how that how well that works because I have videos that before they even go live will get flagged. Yeah, and that's so, got to be that's got to be AI going through and having access to that. Yeah, unless if so, heroes get access to just uploaded videos, as regardless. It's just yeah, it's a horrible idea. I, th I think like they might have pulled it. I've heard some people say that they are flaggers, like trusted flaggers, but it's also like you don't know who's telling the truth and who's lying. To be honest, so it's it's hard to tell. Um, that's just the truth of it. You know, you, we don't know everything because they don't tell us everything. Um, but the, I mean, enough people, I think criticized YouTube heroes to where I think they, they might've taken it back to the drawing board. Hopefully they killed it cause it needs to it die. It almost feels like that's where this algorithm was born out of. Well, if we can't have um, all these people do it, let's have a computer do it. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, think about it. It's like 400, was it 400 years of content is uploaded every single day. Yeah, you know, I mean, and as a result of that, it's um, they have the human eyes. You know, a human can't review everything, so they have to, yeah. and their machine learning AI still has to learn. And so when they, but also the best way to describe it too is like YouTube is like an iceberg, right? Mm -hmm. Like a Titanic killing iceberg. So it has to, it, if it's floating around out there, any move it makes is gonna take time. It's got to shift. You know, and if it hits anything, there's going to be lots of damage. And so it's kind of it's it's difficult to they, they have to play it very safe, which is one of the reasons why they're not communicating. Is because they're playing it safe. However weird that might sound, that's the that's the case. Yeah. Um, and it'd be nice, though, if they would, you know, trust the trust their audience enough, trust the creators enough to get it. You know, trust the creators enough to under to understand what's going on if they did that then things would be i think a little bit better yeah i wholeheartedly agree i hope that we for anyone watching i hope that we might have presented some some positivity to this in some way and not just like oh this is a horrible thing um but i, I i'm hoping that some good has come out of this discussion this stream in, in some way um I guess only, only time will tell because this is this is just this is something we're dealing with in the here and now. It's hard to necessarily see the, the positives aside from what came out today, which, as you said, is a step in the right direction. So. Yeah, I mean, well, this this uh, this particular algorithm change, the thirty percent thing, actually was from like four days ago, apparently. Oh, was it? So yeah. Let me so read that really quickly. It should have because it twenty sixth. Yeah. Four days yeah. ago, yeah. But the thing is, there too, not uh, not a lot of people were talking about it, well, which is very they, weird. They didn't put it somewhere where people were going to see it. Yeah. 
So that's that's why I'm just like, <laughs> you know, it, it, it requires people to be vigilant. Um, it requires a lot of people to remain vigilant. And uh, that's always sometimes it's hard to do because there's, you know, if they're going to hide it in the product forum and not their creator blog. And I don't even think it's still at the creator blog. No, it's not. Uh, I checked it. It's not. That's the first place I looked. I'm like, it's not here. So yeah, the first uh, yeah the last the last one they posted there was from uh from tw- almost twenty eight almost three weeks ago. Yeah. So I know the one change that they made recently, like a couple months ago, where you had to have at least I think ten thousand lifetime views on your channel before you could. Oh, you still need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that I actually agree. That makes sense. Adding a threshold where you can't monetize right off the bat actually makes sense it's the way it used to be and that probably eliminated a lot of like the the easy to hit you know targets of what really needed to be demonetized yeah uh, it's just it's just oh man it, you know uh, it's, it gets so like just daunting after a while because you're like, just fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's I don't know. I I I hope it will get better. It's all I think at this point that I could hope that will happen because I really don't want to go back to get. Uh, I don't want to go back to working for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Entirely. I'm you know. I'm trying. My goal right now is to be out of my day job by the end of the year, like literally December 31st, last day of work, and I, I'm still not sure how that's going to happen. But I I have to make that that transition, and it's like I I just wish things were. It, it was like with the way things are now, I can't even rely on if I had ten thousand or a hundred thousand subscribers right now that I'd even be making the money to do it it's well yeah i mean given what you told me about where you live (laughs) i told my girlfriend that by the way and she was just like what what well Well, you'll have to come uh uh, bring her down and and we'll go jump in the hot tub and then we'll see what you guys have to say (laughs) okay i that that sounds weirder than i meant yeah, a little bit. I get you. I get you, buddy. I get you. I'm I get meaning you. the amenities time. here. Yes, I pay a lot for rent. Tomorrow night is nice. Halloween. Don't say that to children as they come knock on your door. <laughs> Hello, little girl and boy. <laughs> Would you, Would you like... like Halloween candy? Join me in the hot tub. I was Don't going worry. to say, join me. Not... There's a seat in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, did you hear about that one the other day? This is what? horrible. A woman actually killed her two kids. Uh, no, I uh, hadn't. Put them in the oven and turned it on and then took a video of it to send it to the father. I'm not even kidding you. That happened. Yeah. We live in a really dark place. We do. We really, really do. Yeah. If you want to know more stories like that, follow my channel. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, let me go ahead and, and close out. Matt, I want to thank you for coming on to... My stream this evening uh it's been a pleasure uh hopefully sometime soon we can do an updated video where we actually maybe discuss how we came out of this or maybe some actual positive things of how we can combat this um, oh yeah sure I'm, I'm working on i'm i'm trying to learn as much as i can it's just you know there's a lot of speculation that goes around uh i'm hoping to become youtube certified at some point i'm trying to become youtube certified so then I can have that understanding to then teach it to other people. There we go. Best of luck. You'll have to let me know what's even involved in that. Um, that sounds daunting. Probably lots of cocaine. I'm hoping cocaine. <laughs> that just feels easier to me. All right. Well, again, I do want to thank you for joining and for everyone in uh, that joined us live in the chat room. I want to thank you for participating in this conversation. Uh, again, um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. If you haven't liked this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up and ch- please check out Matt's channel as well. The description is or the link is down in the description. 
Um, we'll uh, most likely be back next Monday. Don't have a guest lined up just yet, but we'll figure that out for you. Uh, and then, of course, uh, throughout the week, I'll have a few YouTube videos um, to go on. So uh, thank you once again, and uh, we will see you guys later. Bye.